Good afternoon and welcome back to the Workbench. So today I just want to do a little bit of a video on the uh, soldering iron station controller um, thing that I've been working on and it's almost uh, finished. Um, I've finally got the thing to a state where I can plug it in and turn it on and play around with it and I just want to uh, talk about it a little bit. So this is basically some kind of Franken station um, that I've built uh, from a project that I found online um, and I've modified it a bit to suit my own purposes and it's also using a uh, knockoff uh, hacker T12 style tip, um, which is one of those ones, modern style one, like the JPC and various others, that uh, integrate the thermocouple and the heater and the tip all into one one piece. So yeah, they're more expensive to buy a tip, but they're also much more efficient because everything is in one piece of metal. Um, there's less thermal lag, there's more precision because the temperature sensor can be much closer to the heater. Um, in this case the heater is the temperature sensor, um, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, they've got all that kind of stuff. Um, much more efficient and this is higher power than my old iron. This one is I think about 50 watts. Uh, this one is should be about 70 watts. And it is a knockoff tip and a knockoff handle, so it probably won't be as good performance as a genuine HECO. Um, the good thing with this is you could actually put a genuine HECO tip in there, um, or even a handle if you wanted one, although I didn't really want one because the genuine handles are bright yellow and kind of annoying really, to be honest. Um, <laughs> this one I bought, uh, it's branded a Quico, it's a much nicer design, I much prefer the black and silver and it's uh, got a nice kind of thin profile rubber little grip on the end here, which looks a lot nicer than the giant foam ones that the genuine Hacko ones have. Anyway, I don't know, I just thought it looked better, so I bought this one anyway. Um, and of course it was cheaper um, too. But yeah, this is a uh, design from a another design, so this is um design from here. Uh, so I've just copied, well, kind of copied, modified this design um, someone here has made. This person called Sparky BG. I don't know who this is, but they seem to be um, quite uh, prolific in designing things, and um, they seem to know what they're doing. So I figured it was a good project to base this on. Um, so this original one, as you can see from these renderings, is uh, more compact. It's got uh, double-sided boards, lots of surface mount stuff. Um, I think he designed this to fit inside a Blackjack 3000 soldering iron station that he already had, as far as I know, and just to build a better controller for the stuff he already had and allow it to attach different tips and better tips. Um, but obviously uh, I didn't need to design that to fit any particular case, um, so I just uh, modified it substantially as well to... Um, uh, keep the cost down. So for example, um, you know, he's using service mount components uh, in many places, um, so I've just uh, basically made mine as just about all through hole, um, because I already had through hole components that I could use, there's no point in buying service mount ones that I didn't have um, just to build this, it was just better to just redesign it all. Um, for use uh, with with through hole parts anyway, and some things I changed, like uh, you know, here's the microcontroller here, and then we got I think it was a uh, ULN 2003, um, pretty popular thing designed like for driving LED arrays or motors or something. Um, I think he used this to just to make everything smaller, but in my case I didn't care about the size so much, so I actually used discrete transistors, um, which I already had some BC327s or whatever. Um, which was much uh, much cheaper than trying to find some chip I didn't have a copy of. Um, and yeah, and uh, this uh, this uh, power supply here, um, so it's got like an unfiltered 24 volt DC to the heater. It's also got like a 5 volt for the um, microcontroller. And he's done this with like a switch mode converter, a little buck regulator thing, um, which I don't really understand the point of. Uh, in my case, I just used an LM317, um, set it to 5 volts, uh, which can handle the voltage and works fine. An LM7805 uh, wouldn't work here because the input voltage is too high, um, but the 317 works fine. Um, obviously, uh, this is going to be more efficient with the buck regulator. He's not going to display as much power because uh, you're stepping it down from quite a high voltage to quite a low voltage. But it's not a... Uh, 
very complicated piece of circuitry in the uh, display is going to be the main you know main current draw in this you know, the microcontroller is not going to use much and op amp is going to use barely anything um so yeah i mean the overall uh, power draw i'm not sure what it actually is but it's pretty low so you know a 317 with decent heat sinking is fine in my opinion um so yeah but that's that uh, this is all fully open source project, so it's fine to copy that and build it yourself, whatever. Um, the files are all here on the forum. I'll put a link to this. Um, but yeah, it supports the T12, the T15, which I believe are practically the same thing. Uh, supports the JBC C245. I'm not sure what that's from, if that's uh, an old one or not. probably is. Um, it also supports generic, just like uh, low wattage ions with K-type thermocouple. So. Um, yeah, you can fit like three, four different style tips on this, um, so it's still not too bad. Our project, I've obviously designed my own boards for this, so I'll release those when I finally finish everything. There was a couple of bodges I had to do on the board, because um, I did a couple of mistakes there, um, so I have to finish updating that. Um, but yeah, aside from that, it uh, works uh, pretty well. So... Yeah, I guess at this point I'll just do a little demonstration. So if we just go back to uh, the desktop here, or the this desktop, not that desktop, um, <laughs> I will uh, power it up and we can just have a quick look and see um, how it goes. And let's see, so I just uh, grab this here. Um, so if I go down and I've got it set to 350, you can see it quickly comes up to there. The light starts flashing. So that light is uh, the heater light that tells you when the heater's on. Um, it's a bit bright, so I've got the tape over it. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to increase the resistor to that um, substantially, I think. It's a, very e it's a very highly efficient LED, so it's getting the same drive current as the display, but it's much brighter, and with the tape off there, it's just like a strobe light, so it's... Uh, not particularly uh, good. Um, <laughs> I'll have to change that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing does work. It heats up really quickly. Um, it's definitely quite nice. You can see it does melt solder. If I just get some solder here. Um, you know, you should be able to see that. So, it does work. Um, I don't know if the temperature is uh, very accurate. Obviously, it's not going to be accurate at the moment because I haven't calibrated it yet. Um, I need to calibrate it. Um, I haven't done that yet because I didn't have the required trim pot for the actual channel. Um, that is here. <laughs> I ended up... Uh, well, I did have a trim pot. It's a 500k ohm one. I salvaged one off an old uh, treadmill, treadmill controller, I think. Um, stuck it in there, but at some point one of the leads broke off, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, I had to chuck that away, and uh, gonna have to order another one. Um, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, I need to calibrate this. So I don't know. I mean, it melts solder. It's obviously working. The uh, temperature is regulating to 350. I'm not sure if it is 350 or not. Um, but it's obviously gonna be somewhere around there because it does seem to work. I haven't done like actual tests on it, but I won't do that until I've actually calibrated it and everything. Um, maybe I'll use something uh, external thermocouple and check the temperature, see if it's uh, see if it is accurate and all that um, but yeah I mean basically it does work um, I just need to build everything into the case now um, and get everything wired up properly so you know put the proper cable on the soldering iron I've got uh, all the other bits I need for this so you know here's the cable that came with the handle I haven't put that on yet um, main switch plug everything like that um, still have to do all those but yeah I mean it does actually does actually function. So I'll just unplug it and it goes three lines and then just fades off. So so yeah, um, it seems to be working quite well. Alright, so let's uh, have a bit more close-up look at this thing. So like I said, this tape I took here to uh, cover this LED, which is ridiculously bright at the moment. Um, I'll have to change the resistor for it. But uh, that's the display panel I got at the front here. Um, so we've got the display, we've got the uh, indicator light there, and we got the uh, three uh, buttons here obviously for selecting you know, that's uh, increased temperature, that's decrease, that's presets and menu and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty basic. It's uh, 
just has a simple set of controls. Um, you can probably also modify this to put in a uh, rotary controller for the buttons, um, potentially if you wanted to. Um, should be quite simple, you know, up and down, left and right for these, and then push it to uh, do this button. Um, it's probably to think of that because I actually think I would have preferred that to be honest. Um, but yeah, oh well. Maybe if I even make another one, that's what I'll do, or I could maybe retrofit one to this. But at the moment, I mean, we've got three buttons, it works fine. Um, that's what I've got. Anyway, so that's the uh, difference here. So the display, the buttons, that's all just on one board. Um, I've got space here for a speaker. Uh, the original design shows a speaker in it, but to be honest, I got sick of the, uh, the speaker in my hot air station. And I don't really want one with a speaker in it, so <laughs> I've put space for that there if I ever for some weird reason decide I want one, but um, I probably never will. Um, so yeah, um, that's that. Um, and then we've got the main control board here, so I've got this. Uh, the irons are soldered directly on here, but I'll put a plug on there later obviously. But we've got the control board. Um, so there we go, this is my display drive transistors, so instead of the, the UDN 2003 or whatever it is, um, we've just got those discrete transistors there. Um, the microcontroller, obviously, I've used the three-hole version instead of the surface mount one because it just makes it easier to put on the board and everything. Um, there's our programming header there. It's the uh, MOSFET control drive circuitry up there. MOSFET is surface mount one on the other side. Uh, and then we've got the uh, thermocouple amplifier and st stuff here, and there's the trim port. That's for one channel. The other one should be another trim port here, but like I said, it broke, so... I've just got a uh, resistor there at the moment, so it's obviously not calibrated. I can't calibrate it because of that. Um, but on the other side of the board, there's the uh, op amp there for the uh, thermocouple reading. Um, that is obviously surface mount because I had to buy that op amp anyway. I didn't have one that I could have replaced it with. Um, and I figured it made more sense just to buy the exact same one he used to make sure you get the same performance and everything. Um, just less question marks on everything, the design, easier to build, so I just used the same one and that's fine. This MOSFET is a different one, I think his one used an IRF2105 or something. Um, this was just uh, some other part, Infineon, I think, that I had. I forget the model number exactly, but that was just one I had lying around and its specs were pretty much exactly the same or better. Um, so I just used that instead and yeah, um, made more sense just use stuff I already had. So most of the stuff I already had, I just had to buy the microprocessor and the op amp. Um, and yeah, I mean obviously the handle and everything I had to get, but you know in terms of actual electronic components, the display, I had to get the display, um, the buttons, but all the other stuff practically already had, so that's uh, kept the cost down quite a bit. And I made the board myself out of this old cheap stuff, so that was fine. That was easy. Um, and the power supply, like I said, Instead of using the uh, buck regulator like he did, I just went with a 317 and I've heat sinked that to the case. So this is all just solid alum aluminium. So yeah, pretty good heat sink. This thing doesn't get hot at all. Um, it's fine. Uh, trim pot here to select 5 volts. Yeah, filter capacitor for it. Um, this is some old one I found. 450 microfarad. It's quite old, so it's quite large, but it fits. Um, got a fuse, obviously. Um, and then this is the tap off for the power to the heater and it also detects the zero crossing point of the waveform um, all that kind of stuff. We've got a nice big bridge rectifier here. I think this one is like 10 amps rated. Um, what is it? 25? I'm not sure. It's quite a high rating anyway. It's it's more than what this uses which I think is about 5 amps maximum. Um, so yeah, I decided to use that just to keep the heat down make, make sure everything was efficient as possible and obviously the less current you draw through this, the less voltage drops, so that's good. Um, yeah, and then we've got this nice big fat transformer here, 24 volts, um, AC out, so rectified, it's, I don't know, about 30 something. Um, this uh, took a while for me to get this. Um, I didn't buy a brand new one. This was uh, cheaper to get the second hand. It's, uh, I think, 100 VA, so or was it more? It was 120 VA. I'm not sure. Anyway, you need um, quite a high power one for these irons apparently, so I could have bought a lower rated one from JCAR for brand new, but I actually got this one with better rating for second hand for like $10 less, so that was pretty good. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've got the mains obviously hooked up just to this uh, 
little terminal block here, but I'll have a proper power cord, um, have a uh, socket on the back here. The only interesting and well annoying thing really with this was the uh, the case I bought um, off AliExpress. Uh, it was supposed to be about this long, but they sent me one that was about this short. Um, and I can still fit everything in if I cram it in. So these are gonna cram in like this, um, like this at the front, and they're gonna have standoffs and bolts that mount them to the front panel. So that's how that's going to fit there. So everything just fits. I might need to put some kind of insulating material between these these boards just in case, but um, everything basically fits in there. Um, I had to change the power socket on the back. Um, I don't know if you can see it in here. I Yeah, there it is. This uh, cloverleaf style one. You can see... Uh, maybe I'll just pull it out. Well, yeah, I got one of these ones. These like little, little smaller three-pin cloverleaf things. Obviously fine because we don't um, need high current for this. It's just a soldering iron. Um, but yeah, I had to take that so I could cram it in, fit it in the side by the thing, by the transformer there. Um, I couldn't fit a standard-sized one because the case is just too short. So fortunately, I was able to use this case even though it was too small. Um, well, smaller than I the one I actually ordered. But uh, yeah, it's better than having to just buy a whole new one or something because it was impossibly small. But yeah, fortunately I was able to uh, still use it. Um, I complained to AliExpress about that and they just said send it back and we'll send you another one. Well, of course the cost of shipping this back to China would be more than just buying another one. So I just made it work with a shorter case and uh, had to just downsize some stuff and cram things in a bit more. That's why this PSU board is uh, a separate thing and it's all quite thin and, and stuck down here like this and everything. So yeah, but it, it all works I think. Should be alright in the end. Um, so yeah, that's the current state of affairs for that. Um, it is uh, is almost finished. I just basically have to kind of machine the rear panel on this to make some cutouts for a fuse holder and the power socket. Um, and then I sort of make a front panel. I'm going to use like smoked perspex so that I can have the displays just uh, shining through the uh, perspex instead of having to make a cutout and then trying to make that flush and everything. So yeah, it was just easier to use some perspex I think for that. Um, easier to cut too for the cutout for the power switch. So that's also why these uh, slots are here. That's to create clearance for the uh, power switch, main power switch and the socket for the uh, the soldering iron handle. Um, yeah, if I'd had more room in the case, I wouldn't have to have these cutouts. But these are the power switch is going to have to stick like halfway down through this board. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of pain to cram everything in. But yeah, oh, well, at least I can do it. Um, it's better than nothing. But yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, like I said, it's basic design that's uh, already there. You can have a look at the design on the website there and decide uh, what you think of it. Um, but that's uh, my interpretation of that. Single sided boards. Um, I was all done myself. Um, and yeah, all through hole stuff mostly. Because uh, that was just cheaper. Because I already had all those bits. But yeah, there we go. So that's my um, T12 style DIY controller that um, is coming along nicely and should be finished soon. And um, once I give it a good test and um, all that and see how it performs, I'll be able to tell you if it's uh, worth doing. <laughs> um, I think it will be. Um, if nothing else, then the uh, greater selection of tips, I guess, that you can uh, fit in these things, because as I probably mentioned in another video, I think a while ago, um, the uh, big problem with these that I noticed, obviously because of the design, these uh, 936 style and other ones that work the same way, is you have this little outside shroud thing that slips over the tip, so you know, the tip can only be wide, as wide as the hole in the end of this, whereas uh, this style one, let's make sure it's cold now, um, <laughs> there's this cartridge style one, it just slots in the end there, so yeah, you can basically have this tip can be as wide as you like, and uh, if you look on eBay, you can find ones that are you know, this, this wide, and uh, also various funky different sh uh, shapes and sizes, so, you know, there's no limitation to that, to the uh, width you can fit in the end, because it just plugs straight in here, um, doesn't have a retaining shroud and collar, whatever thing, to uh, go over the end. So there's definitely a benefit to that. 
So yeah, hopefully uh, this should be finished soon. Hopefully um, it'll all work as intended, and uh, yeah, should be quite good. So I'll either uh, update this video adding in the extra footage, or I'll just uh, make another one about how the thing goes once it's all finished, but for now that's uh, all I can really say about it at the moment. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's that, so hopefully that was interesting, and I'll see you next time.